This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Welcome once again to another Ramble, Alex Bennett's Ramble. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll be here until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Right now it's five minutes past 10 o'clock on the east coast of the United States, so wherever you are in the world, adjust to that and you'll be able to tell whether we're live or not, otherwise this is a recording. But you're going to have just as much fun listening to a recording as anything else. And to prove that, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk to a friend of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles. Yes, it's really Bubbles Brown. Larry Bubbles Brown, Mr. Fun. I, I, I read about some guy who got killed in the Tenderloin District who was a cross-dresser. Oh, yeah. I, was get, so I got so many calls. Oh. <laughs> and people said they opened the paper up and thought I'd been shot. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was me. There was some, his name was, was Bubbles. Some, he was a cross-dresser, he was some street performance artist that named Bubbles, yeah, and uh, he got killed, and people thought it was me. Well, why not? I've risen from the ashes. You've risen from the ashes. <laughs> but there to be two Bubbles in one city. I don't know how that happens. But. Yeah, well, every couple of weeks uh, we call Bubbles, and then we do, like, two weeks' worth of discussions, so... Sometimes if we talk about stuff, it's like a week later than the event really took place. But I wanted to ask you, uh, are you, um, how old are you now? I've just hit Medicare. You're 65? Yeah. And um, you, you've got Medicare and you've got, I guess, well, you will get Social Security soon, right? Oh, I took that at 62. I oh, took okay. that early, yeah. So here are a couple of old farts. So anyway, and Medicare is pretty good. I mean, it, you know, takes care of at least 80% of your medical needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you take care of the other 20% by having a supplemental? Uh, I haven't signed up for a supplemental yet. So I'm with the, I'm, I'm still with Kaiser. Oh, you're with Kaiser. Kaiser. Oh, or or yeah. as, as you used to call them. <laughs> Doctor assisted suicide. Yeah, right. Uh, and That's I, actually a good line. I should bring that back. That is a good line. It's a terrific line. It lost us them as an advertiser. <laughs> uh, I <it> did, yes. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, well, if you have Kaiser, I guess maybe maybe you don't need a supplemental or whatever. I don't know. But anyway. It's uh, also complicated. Yeah. I don't know do you how have, do you have any, uh, outside of the hernia, do you have any other major health uh, concerns? I do have a cataract, uh, 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 and I think you owned a, you owned a Chevrolet as well. So, uh, so. <laughs> but you said you had a cataract, and you got it taken care I of. I had two of them. I, you know, I mean, one at a time. Uh, you know, you're, uh, the center of my eye kind of got blurry. So you go in. It's just have you have you have you taken care of it yet? No, it's it's he says it's very mild now. So. Uh, oh, so you said that it's very oh, uh, simple, right? The yeah. Surgery? Yeah. Oh, it's 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 you know um, it, the the only thing is for about twenty four hours you have to wear a cup over your eye, protect your eye. And um, yeah. oh, really? We lost Larry Bubbles Brown. See, that's what happens when you're having fun. Hold on a second, folks, and let me call him back. Just uh, you know. There we go. We're calling back. Yeah, we're yeah. I don't know. We got cut off there. Son of a bitch. Well, cut off like a cataract. No, well, Skype. It just goes boop, and that was it. You know. Anyway, where was I? You said you have to wear a cup over your eye. You have to wear a cup over your eye, and that's maybe the most annoying part of it. You know, uh, because you you look like. And he, remember, there was always like some kids in school who would have something wrong with them, and they'd wear, either wear braces or cups over their eyes or whatever. You kind of feel like that, mm -hmm. you know. That's for a day. That's for a day. 
But it's it's pretty simple. It didn't used to be simple. Years ago, it used to be like three-month recovery, and you had to sleep on a thing so that you wouldn't move your head while you slept and all of that. And yeah, today, I think you had to put your head between sandbags or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and now, yeah. now it's you go in, you do it. The doctor asks you to come back to the office the next day to make sure it's okay, and he sends you home. You put drops in there for a couple of days, and then you that's it. You know, it's not painful. No, no, they put they uh, don't knock. They don't knock you out. No, they put um, they put uh, uh, they deaden your eyeball. They Ugh. put well, no, they put some drops in your eyes. It just deadens your eyeball. Uh, and then they go in there and they remove they remove the lens. And, uh, you know, you just lie in there while they're doing all this. It doesn't hurt. It's not. It, the only thing that's maybe uncomfortable is they ask you to sit still, but that's about it, you know, and I'm fidgety. Um, but, no, it was very simple, and they, I liked it so much I went back and did it again, you know, because of the, <laughs> the other one wasn't bad, It, but they said, let's wait for it to get ripe. That's the term they use. Right. And, and it got it, – <laughs> It got ripe, and I got the other one done. So now I have two fake lenses in my eyes. But you know, it improved. Uh, oddly enough, it improved my vision a bit. I was wearing two seventy-five glasses or something, and it went down to like one fifty, one seventy-five. So, and a lot of stuff I can read, like I can read the uh, the computer screens here without using glasses. Although I I tend to put them on anyway, yeah. but. Okay, so that's your other problem. Anything? Any other major health problems? That's about it. Other than well, the what, ringing in the ears, which I guess everyone's got tinnitus. So. Well, I don't have tinnitus, but I I have. Let's see here. I have uh, the hernia, which I've got to go see a doctor about it. You know. It, yeah, it, mine's it, fairly sore today. So. Yeah, sore. Yeah. Yours gets sore. Mine. Mine kind of like gets hurts when I walk. You know. Yeah, it comes and goes. If I'm wearing a belt too tight. It causes a problem. Anyway, so anyway, I've got to go get that taken a look at. And I got my feet are are get numb when I lie down, or sit for elongated periods of time. And what what's the other thing? Oh yeah, and and um, that, wait a minute, that's about it. That's not a lot. No, you're in good shape. But here's what bothers me. See, as you get older. It's almost as though you go to the doctor and he, what he's doing is he's looking, he's exploring for things that can be wrong so that he can make a living, <laughs> all right? So um, I go last year, I get the, my PSA test, which actually over the age of 75, you're not supposed, they're not supposed to give you a PSA test, but my doctor still does. And it jumped up about a point, 1.1 points, okay? From like a 1.8 to a 1.2.7 or something, or 2.8 from a, from a 1.7, and uh, so I I was going to a urologist anyway, so I made an appointment for the urologist to have him check me over and make sure I'm okay, and I told him how this had gone up, and he said, well, come back in six months, it, 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 go get here's a here's the thing in six months. Go to uh, you know one of these blood laboratories and get your blood drawn and and get the test. I said, okay, we'll get the PSA test again. So now, I'm this. Uh, how, how can I put it? You know me. I'm a hypochondriac. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's nothing more terrorizing than knowing that October is coming and I'm going to have to have this blood test. And is that PSA test going to jump? Now the reason you take the PSA test is if it goes crazy, uh, it means you might have prostate cancer. Right. Okay? So uh, I, 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 I hem and I haw and I wait and I finally get the test. All right? I make an appointment with the doctor for a week later so that it can have time. And I get the test in and they send it to me before I go to the doctor and it's three points lower, three-tenths of a point lower than it was in the earlier time. So I'm going, hey, that's good, right? Didn't mm -hmm. go up. You know, it, it went down. So that probably means I don't have any prostate cancer. All right. So now I go to the doctor. This gets a little complicated. 
And they say, oh, you didn't pay uh, the uh, overage on your bill from the last time. And I went, why didn't you just mail it to me? They said, oh, our computers were down. Okay, well, then why don't you wait until they're up and then send me the bill so I can write you a check. So I didn't have a checkbook with me, and they don't take credit cards. It's crazy. So I... um, uh, I gave him cash, right? And I'm looking at the bill. Cash, and, wow. <laughs> and and he did like a sonogram on me. It was only $93. He did a sonogram on me. So, uh, uh, two different pelvic sonogram and, a, and a, a renal sonogram, which was all the same swipe, just they're chopped up into two things. And one was $200 on the bill, and the other was $250 on the bill. And I'm going, okay, well, you know, what the hell? I got a good check up that time. So now I go in to see the guy, and I tell him it went down two ten- three-tenths of a point. And he says, that's good. Looks like uh, there was no uh, uh, upward movement on that. I said, fine. He says, come on in. Let me, uh, let me um, uh, do a sonogram on you. Only this time, he doesn't do the regular sonogram where he just – puts the wand over my body, you know, and looking for kidney stones and things like that, uh, he he's, he shoves the sonogram up my ass. Oh, God. <laughs> so he can look at my prostate. And he looks at it and he says, ah, you have a little uh, calcium in there. or no, uh, uh, Maybe it's not calcium. Maybe it's some other thing he was talking about. But it's, it's you know, it, 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 it prostate stones kind of can come from this. But he says, that's no big deal. And he said, the rest of your prostate looks just fine. You know, and I said, okay, good. That's good news. Okay. So now we go back into his office and he says, okay, well, uh, let's do this again in six months. Take another test in six months. And I'm thinking to myself, why? I just took a yeah, test exactly. and it's better. And he said, oh, so I said, my doctor, my regular doctor will do a blood draw on me in March. I said, so we'll get a PSA then, so I'll, you don't have to write me anything. I'll just get it done then, and I'll make a, a visit to you. But I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. I just, you know, the reason why supposedly we, we got the test is he just wanted to see if my, if my PSA had gone up, all right, when he found out it went down, he should have said, okay, I'll see you in a year, right? No, I'll see you in six, get another blood draw, I'll see you in six months. And I'm trying to think about this. I said, so how's my prostate? He said, good. I said, not great. He says, hey, nobody at your age has a great prostate. He says, it's good. It's enlarged and, you know, you're fine, but I don't see anything. He says, there's a 5% chance you have cancer. <laughs> So I went, okay, well, I'll take those odds. Yeah. So I'm leaving, and I'm starting to think about this. And, you know, he he wanted me to come back in six months. Why? And then, of course, you get paranoid, like maybe he saw something, you know, or he was worried about something. And it just suddenly hit me. No, he wants to be able to use that fucking sonogram on me yeah. again and get more money six months from now. Exactly. You saw money. Y- yeah. I mean, that, you know, what is going to happen in six months? You know, it went down. You should just say, hey, don't, don't come, come back and see me in a year and we'll see what's happening. Okay. Uh, and that, I, that, I, that, that, that would make sense to me. But he says, six months. And I'm thinking. These doctors are probably hurting so much for money now that they all say come back in six months, whether you need yeah. it or not. You know, worse than car salesman. Yeah, and and I know when I go there, he's gonna once again he's gonna use the sonogram on me because every time he's he runs it across my body, and the last time it was four hundred and fifty bucks. You know, and yeah. and this and and I who knows how much the sonogram up my ass is going to cost. You know, so he sees this. Uh, you know, it's like I'll see you in six months because he wants to make more money, and that bothers me. That yeah, really bothers me. So know. don't do it. Well, uh, my wife said nobody says you have to go back to him in six months. He just said come see me in six months. You know. So if I, if I find that my, my numbers have gone up a, 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 a bit, uh, I'll go see them. And if they haven't gone up, fuck them. I'll see them next year. You know? I mean, uh, apparently I don't have, you know, cancer. 
So I wouldn't worry about it at all. Prostate cancer. And then I said to him, here, here, here's the one I loved. I read somewhere that you're not supposed to give a prostate, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, the uh, PSA test to anybody over the age of 75. And the, the prevailing wisdom is that all you do is you cause unnecessary problems. Like if you find a little bit of cancer, it may be slow growing and it's not a problem. And then you do biopsies and that, that can be a problem. You know, so it's it's they say do not do it to people who are over, you know, 75. So I said to him, I said, you had me getting all these PSA tests. And I said, I real real read that the prevailing wisdom is don't give them after 75. And he said, well, he said, you know, I had a guy in here. He was 85 years old and he hadn't had a blood test in a while. And his his PSA went crazy. It went up to like 95 or something, I don't know, 79 or something. And he had prostate cancer. And I managed to prolong his life for another three years. I'm thinking, 85, 98, <laughs> you know. Uh, and I'm going, oh, yeah. And he said, but, you know, most of his family lived to be over 90. So he didn't have as long a life as they did. And so it's good to keep doing these tests. And I'm thinking to myself, Boy, he's going a long way to make a point here. Yeah, you better get away from that guy. Well, the thing is, he's the only urologist I've ever had that I like. You know, uh, most urologists are the nastiest, meanest fucking people in the world. I, and I, I'd be that way, too, if I was constantly having to stick my finger up people's asses. <laughs> you know? I mean, I can understand how urology is not the most glamorous of all professions. And this guy never has stuck his finger up my ass. He used the, the sonogram to do it, right? Because I don't think he likes putting fingers up people's asses himself. And that's, why his, a college for that. and that's why his attitude is a little better than the guy who has to stick his finger up somebody's ass because he doesn't own a sonogram machine. You know, so, uh, I mean, it, I, so I, I, you know... It's been bothering me. I should have walked out of there yesterday feeling great. You know, hey, I don't have, he didn't say I had anything wrong with me, you know. Um, but, you know, he wanted to make sure that my, next time it's, it's fine, you know, and come see me again, you know. And I know when I go to see him again, he's not going to look at the numbers and say, well, this is okay or this is, you know, fine. We'll see you next time. He'll go, let me uh, go. Let's go in the other room and give you a checkup. And then he goes with the wand again, and it's another 450 bucks. So, you know, I mean, I just, I I find it disgusting. (laughs) Flee in horror from that man. Yeah, well, you know, he, but he's the only nice urologist I could find. You know, and if you go to another urologist, you got to start all over again. You know, uh, well, these numbers, uh, they're okay, but you know, and and how do you know that guy's not going to be worse than this guy? I went to one guy that was so horrible; he did two cystoscopies on me when I really didn't need them. You know what that is? No. They stick a telescope up your dick. Ooh, ow! Yeah, yeah. I think I, Meg. You know what I did? My first kidney stone when I was really young. I had I had that done. That was not fun. Yeah, that was that was not fun. And the guy was always, you know, terrorizing me. You know, like I said, he said, uh, "Well, you know, um, you were a smoker. You could have bladder cancer." And I go, "I quit smoking twenty five years ago." And he said, "Yeah, but you could still have bladder cancer." <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, you mean I gave up 25 great years of smoking to still get fucking cancer? I shouldn't have quit. And he looked at me like, what? You know, oh, no, it was good you quit. It was good you quit. And I go, well, I'm still getting the cystoscopy. <laughs> so, you know, you can, you, can, you can get these guys who are an abs- absolute horror. So, I mean, if I quit this guy, I got to find another urologist. Or maybe I just say, fuck it, I'll die of prostate cancer. I don't care, you know? I mean, at my age, I'm living on borrowed time anyway. 
So why should I spend that borrowed time being terrorized by doctors who were sending me out for tests? I mean, I knew this test was coming. It got me all agitated. I then got it. Then I'm sitting here waiting for the results. You know, when I got them, I was very happy. Here's another thing. Let me give you another. This this one you're going you're gonna to absolutely love, Bubs. <laughs> do you ever get your cholesterol checked? Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. How is it? Bubs, mine's bad. It's bad. It's one of the reasons I've always uh, been a runner to try to lower the. Uh... Yeah, but do, do, do you take statins at all? No, they keep trying to get me on them, and I don't take them. I would take them if I were you. I had somebody. I had a doctor once who said to me, uh, "If I had a, a child, if I had a child, a kid, a teenager, I'd put him on statins from the time he's a teenager because that will prevent cholesterol." You know, and and it's considered to be one of the best. Well, anyway, here's what happened. I'm on I'm on I'm on a statin. So my blood test comes in in uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, March, end of March, and my cholesterol is sky fucking high. It is just gone off the charts. Really. <laughs> And he said, well, in another three months, go down and get yourself another blood test. So uh, I never did it. So when I got this PSA, they said, well, you know, this has, uh, we're going to, it's a whole blood panel. So you're going to find out all about your cholesterol and so on. And I figured, ah, fuck it. I'll, I'll just send the results to my other doctor as well. So I get the results of this thing. And it's like if you looked at the one that I had where everything was off the charts. I mean, I was down in the 20 for my good cholesterol, and I was, uh, you know, up around, I don't know, 300 for total cholesterol and whatever. You'd think, I mean, I thought I was going to die. I thought yeah, maybe I just had, I had lard in my bloodstream. You know? <laughs> I go and I get this test, the PSA, and it has my cholesterol and everything. My cholesterol is spectacular. It's just, it's the complete opposite of what they did six months ago. It just, it just went the other way. Now, I don't think that suddenly I changed my habits and life got easier, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I'm talking about if you saw these numbers, you go, the, I said to my uh, urologist, are those good numbers? He says, these are spectacular numbers. These are great numbers. You know? And I went, huh. Wonder where they fucked up at the lab. Yeah, they must have got, some, they must have got mine. <laughs> they must have gotten yours. Yeah. They switched. Yeah, it's like a Jerry Seinfeld episode with the yogurt, you know? Uh, but I mean, it's it's just amazing that it. Well, you gotta wonder. Maybe they did switch somebody there. Right? Well, I mean, so you go, you get these tests, and then you get the results of them, and then you live in dire panic. You're right. You know? Oh my God! You know when's the stroke gonna happen? Any minute now, because there's lard surging through my bloodstream, and uh, you just go, this is this is you know this is not good. So I, I you know I wonder how much. You need to see a doctor. Do you need that yearly checkup? I mean, you know, I mean, I I just don't uh, I I don't see the validity in it because um, I I like what I have. Albert Reynoso, who was my producer at uh, Sirius XM, said to me once. I have a theory. I said, "What's that?" He said, "If it isn't bleeding." <laughs> You know, and it doesn't hurt. I don't see a doctor, you know, and and uh, he probably has the right feeling on it. I mean, these yearly checkups doctors do, you know, to begin with, that doctor doesn't even fucking know me. He's got twenty five hundred other people who are his patients as well. And so I'm just whatever he's reading on that piece of paper in front of him. Mm -hmm. You know, and he has things there like the name of your wife and things like that. So he can seem personal. But I don't know. I th- the medical profession is, and I feel sorry for them. You know, they're not making a lot of money these days. You know, the the insurance companies are fucking them over, and Medicare doesn't pay them a lot. 
And uh, so that's why they got to bring you back every six months and get you to take blood tests and then stick a, a wand up your ass so they can throw in another $500 uh, onto the bill. And uh, I blame the insurance companies for all of that. Yeah, it's so. such a fucked up system. Hey, Bubs, we've run out of time once again. Another one of these wonderful get-togethers. Time flies we when we're talking about cataracts. <laughs> cataracts, yeah. Well, we talk, I love talking about medicine these days because you love talking about things which affect you personally. Yeah. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. He, if he's playing at a theater near you, it's probably amazing. Uh, <laughs> no, he's a, he's a great comic. You got to see him. Thank you, Bubbles. Thanks, buddy. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is, of course, Larry Bubbles Brown, and here I am. Uh, I'm sorry for a lot of people watching the TV thing that I just didn't run the Larry Bubbles Brown picture or whatever while he was doing the interview and why well, I kept running the Gabnet thing because I think I zoned out tonight in, 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 in trying to do this program. But anyway, um, I'm losing it. What can I say? It, 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 doing this whole thing, it, it, there's too, I wish I had like an assistant who could do all the, all the little asshole work for me. This earphone is getting screwed. What, what is wrong with it? Let me see here. I may have to send away for another one of these. I uh, anyway, our uh, our phone lines are open, as you uh, may know, if you're if you're checking it out. Uh, just uh, give me a call, and we'll uh, uh, you know we'll talk to you as uh, part of the citizen panel. Uh, not that much to report. I have have some things to talk about once the citizen panel gets here, but. Uh, uh, nothing, nothing new to to uh, to put out there. Um, but rather boring day today. I didn't have anything to do with it. I had, had, didn't have any interviews to do. The cleaning woman came, and I watched her clean the house. The super came because we got a leak from the from the roof going into a closet. So he looked at that and couldn't figure out where the leak's coming from. So we now probably have to wait till the next big storm. I mean, there was a huge storm. Oh, you know, I didn't turn on the phones. See, I'm all out of it tonight. I'm just so out of it tonight. You're lucky you're even getting a program. And my Chrome over here, the show isn't showing, but on the one on girlfriend's computer, it's working just fine. So I assume that it's this Chrome that I have here that has something that's for bludgeon. All right. Anyway. Well, somebody is calling. Oh, what do you know? It's uh, it, it's the old standby. It's the uh, the uh, what could we call them? The uh, uh, the regular. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm happy that I'm regular. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, always the first person who's on is a little out of sync that I've never I haven't been able to figure that one out yet. As soon as somebody else calls, you will not be out of sync. No, no, what? no! Don't, don't, don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do that. <laughs> like a Japanese movie yeah, yeah, that's yeah. been dubbed over. Right, right. So, anyway, how you doing tonight, Phil? Uh, all right, a lot better than those people uh, laying around uh, uh, Tribeca. Now, that stands for what? Triangle below? South? No, Triangle below Canal. Below Canal, right? Yeah, it's a, tri a triangle below canal street yeah uh there's also soho there's uh, uh that's whole, south of houston street and, and they, there are a couple of others they've come up with now that i didn't even yeah tribeca is relatively new by comparison to some of them you know now, houston street used to be the bowery you no, know houston street never was the bowery no no the bowery the bowery goes north and south uh the uh, houston goes east and west oh all right. I lived on Houston. Now, I know what a lot of you people are saying to me. Alex, isn't it pronounced Houston? No, it's pronounced Houston. Yeah. The town that people live in that got flooded out recently, that's, that's Houston. Houston. Right. Yeah. This, uh, this, this, is, this is Houston Street. Okay? So, anyway. What, what, so, what, what's, the problem? Uh, um, Wait, what's the problem here? I can't get... Uh, 
Uh, can't get uh, Mike always has troubles you know uh, yeah. let me get rid of him here let me get rid of him and let me uh, let me call him hold on a second let's see here add to group let's see if he answers the phone okay you stole Mike from another talk show what you, you stole Mike from another talk show there's this guy uh, Travis uh, something yeah uh, he keeps sending me invites to, to join his show, and I press it, and then all of a sudden he says, ah, Phil's here. <laughs> uh, Runkle, Runkle, that's it. Or, oh, yeah, he's a pain in the ass. Yeah. He's, he's, he's uh, I don't understand what he's doing. Uh, well, he, he wanted me, he wanted to do a show here. And yeah. I said, well, let me listen to what you're doing. And I heard what he was doing, and it was so bad. Well, yeah, yeah. He, he wants people to join him, but instead of getting them to join him first, prearranged, and then having a show, yeah. his show is getting people to log on. Really? And, I, I, you know, yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's been so long since I've listened to the damn thing. You know. Well, I've listened to him a couple of times, just wondering, you know, maybe it's going to change, but uh, not yeah. really. Yeah, basically, my attitude was, mm, nah, not on my network. Yeah, and you know, uh, I, I'm so frustrated and want more shows that I'll take just about anything. But I have my limits. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand. You know. uh, but anyway, uh, well, I guess that's our only caller for tonight. So uh, it's just you and me, Phil. Hey, it's been that way before. Hey, uh, so on this uh, on this guy, he's still alive. Yeah, he had three kids and a wife. Yeah, and. And he chose to do this. What, what, what makes a person, what makes a man Look, do this? It, it, it was, let's both agree it was an insane act, okay? Yeah. Well, insanity has no logic. Yeah, you know? but uh, and, he claims he was doing it for ISIS. Yeah, no, but, you know, you've got, t you got three kids and you got a wife. You don't give a shit about that. Right. You know, you, Can you, you imagine if he was your Uber driver and you didn't tip him? <laughs> you know, get out in front of the car. <laughs> you know, I guess Uber taught him his driving skills. Uh, you know, I, I it you know it's a terrible incident. Uh, I I I think we over report it. Okay. Oh yeah, it's I been think going we on. absolutely it's over report it, and I don't know why people at the networks don't realize that they're over reporting this stuff. You know, yesterday they had a report on, I got to tell you, on the news, and I was watching this, and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. Uh, it seems as though uh, people from the big three social media outlets, Twitter, uh, uh, Google, and uh, Facebook, uh, uh, people from each of those organizations testified, testified before Congress. So the story is that these people testified before Congress, and for that story, we go to so-and-so. And so you see the three guys sitting there. And then all was of a sudden... Was Zuckerberg there? What? No. Was Zuckerberg I don't, th no. I, I don't know. Here's what happened the with the story. Guy. This is what happened with the story. Yeah. So they show a, you know, a congressman saying something or a senator or whoever was saying something. And then another senator saying something. And then the reporter is saying what was said at the meeting. And not once... Do you hear a single word from any of the heads of these companies? And yet that was the story that these these heads of these companies had shown up for this, right? Well, you probably missed it. There were some statements. No, the, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm telling you in the story they ran, oh, not okay. one word, not one word out of any of the people from any of those organizations. And I'm going, I'd like to hear what the guy from Facebook had to say. I'd like to hear what the guy from Google had to say. But instead, it's just congressmen postulating and going, you know, we can't have this sort of thing going on in a you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, and, posing for the camera. And I'm going... What kind of news reporting is this, you moron? You know, yeah. I mean, it, 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 please. Let's it's not news anymore. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I know why we don't have anybody tonight. Oh, is it the baseball game? Oh, the seventh game. And they say people who don't even give a shit about baseball are watching it. Well, I must really not give a shit <laughs> because yeah. I haven't watched it. Well, last time I looked, uh, the Astros were blasting away at the at the Dodgers. It was like 5 nothing in the third inning. Uh, is that this game, this seventh game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, right. wait a minute. Hold on. I just described 
the game, which is illegal. Illegal. <laughs> it. I don't have the written permission of the commissioner of but baseball. I'll, I'll give you permission. You give me permission. Okay. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I, uh, uh, I just, I, I, I you know, um, I, I was just so amazed at this reporting that the story was about the fact that these guys were talking before Congress and they didn't show one word of what they had to say. And the only way you knew they were there was there was an opening shot of the three of them sitting at a table. Uh, well, I was watching C, uh, CBS N this morning. Yeah. And uh, they actually had this uh, the, uh, the people talking. Well, yeah, you yeah. see what happens. What happens with those networks on cable? They'll run the whole hearing if they if they right. can because uh, they've got all the time in the world to waste. And yeah. uh, you know, so anytime anybody wants to do a press conference, they're there. You know, every day they do Huckabee's uh, pre press conference, press right? Conference. Press yeah. briefing. And you never heard that happening before. Occasionally you say, today, because it looks interesting, let's go see what they have to say. No, every day now, it's the Huckabee hour, you know? Well, yeah, or Sanders, if you, you know, yeah. one of your married names. Got well, uh, hey, I tell you what's in the news. Well, uh, I, I, uh, I may be thinking about not being a motorcyclist anymore. I dropped my bike on, on uh, Monday. I... I what do you got mean, up you, early. What do you mean you dropped it? It, you, it tipped over on I, you? Or? No. Oh, I, 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 went, I slid across the pavement, pavement 20 feet. Oh, you got some rashes, do you? A little bit. Not well, you, much. Well, you were probably wearing your leathers, right? Well, I wasn't wearing leathers, but I was wearing a special pair of jeans that have Kevlar in it. Oh, I and, see. And they worked. Yeah. Uh, most part. So, what do you uh, mean for the most part? <laughs> well, I, I did get a little... Uh, uh, um, uh, road rash on my leg yeah and um uh, so anyway what happened is uh i go to pick the bike up because uh i have it in the storage room yeah. and i wanted to take it and have it detailed uh so that when i put it away for the winter it would be perfect and i put a cover over it so uh, a few minutes before eight in the morning i'm driving down the street i stopped at a stoplight uh i'm in the left hand lane the light turns green. I slowly accelerate around the corner when I'm making a left turn. And then all of a sudden, the bottom of the bike just drops out from under me. And I'm sliding across the pavement uh, as well as the bike. And uh, since I was the first car in the intersection, everybody stopped behind me. But uh, with the adrenaline, I was able to pick up this 800-pound bike. Uh, yeah. And uh, some things bent. The, the uh, shifter thing bent. I put it in gear and I well, drove it how, back well, to how, the Harley how, place. How did how did you lose control of it? I mean, was that your bad? Uh, uh, no, there was good weather. I didn't see anything on the ground. There was no uh, uh, when I, I took it back to the Harley place, and then I went back this in the afternoon to look. You know, I was wondering, did the kickstand fall down? Did something happen that that caused the rear tire to spin out? Because I didn't hit my brake. I didn't do anything. So uh, I don't know why it happened. I know that there's only a you know a couple of reasons, but it it was like the thing just spun out from under me, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I have thirty thousand miles on this motorcycle. I, this is my fourth bike. I've never had an incident, and for this to happen just just out of the blue, like this, uh, oh, I got three stitches in my elbow. Uh, oh, really? You had to go to the hospital. Yeah, they, yeah, they took x-rays, and uh, I was banged up pretty bad for uh, yesterday and um, uh, the day before. Uh, I could barely walk. Uh, you know, I was in pain. I ah, see, I did your show. I didn't even complain. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's so. Uh, did you hit, uh, did you hit a tri triangle on in the intersection there? A little nothing, patch of nothing. There was no gravel. There was no leaves. There was no wet. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that maybe I drove through an oil puddle uh, prior to making the left yeah. turn. But yep. you know, I have brand new tires. I mean, there's no reason for this to happen. And uh, and I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. You know, it was just normal. yeah. I've had it happen a couple of times where it. It slipped and you catch it, but uh, this was too fast and too too much to catch. I was already yeah. sideways, uh, yeah. and and uh, and going down. So it, it's That's amazing. Sucks. 
Yeah, I, I, I got I'm, I'm really questioning, you know, as bad as I got beaten up, I was doing less than 10 miles an hour. So as bad as I got beaten up at less than 10 miles an hour, uh, I'm saying, you know, maybe I'm too old for this. <laughs> yeah, we're older now. Or either that or go get a trike like I'm thinking about doing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I hardly used it this season. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I got beat up. So, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, and then it takes longer to heal nowadays. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going scuba diving next week. I don't want to <laughs> be beat up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but it could be uh, you're getting too old to ride a motorcycle, you know? I got a feeling so that much. the day is, is coming. And, yeah, selling it sounds good. Actually, uh, the one good thing is no paint was scratched. Uh, I, I was amazing. You and, and you know what? The first thing I looked at was not whether I was hurt. Was the tank damaged? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was was the, or the chrome? Yeah. Well, the, well, I had a little bit of chrome. Uh, the left uh, uh, handle and the clutch lever were scuffed. Uh, the you got crash bars? Uh, no. Oh, uh, okay. The, the um, on the engine, the uh, there was a, a little bit of paint taken off of the uh, bottom of the cover, and my transmission inspection cover was was mangled. Yeah. And, uh, and the gear shift uh, bent, but it didn't affect its operation. Wow. So, so yeah. I've been it, looking it, forward to you coming down for your seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I probably still will. You know, I want to get one of those big uh, dual tour seats that, you know, my big ass can fit in and be very yeah, comfortable. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's good. Well, uh, maybe, maybe you could get just, uh, why don't you get a, a trike, a tricycle? Well, that's, that's what a lot of people are getting. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just. Time I'll tell for you. Me. I well, I've got to tell you. I in all my life, I the one thing I guess I've never been able to get into. And and believe it or not, I you know at, at one time I I thought about it was motorcycles, because yeah. number one I don't trust myself. Okay, uh, and I'm saying why do I want to drive around in something where I can get bugs in my teeth, you know, and uh, you it's know. Uh -huh. It's it's the freedom. It's the well, closest thing I could what, find to what, scuba diving on land. What freedom? What freedom? Uh, the freedom to get like you get bugs flying at your face. No, well you get a you get a windshield, but you uh, but uh, you know the thing is, uh, just to be able to pull over and stop in the places that you go and and the way that uh, you commune with the environment is uh, is unlike what you can do in a car. You know, it, it's, yep. you know, now I, uh, I got a, I got a shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, what were you saying, Kevin? I said, I said, I got a shirt that says, uh, if I have to explain, you'd never understand. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, I, 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 as I say, I just never could get into that. And I, I, somebody actually had me try their motorcycle and try it for, you know, like, about 300 yards or 400 yards and i just i couldn't get the knack of it uh and and, and the idea that it i would yeah but the idea that i'd be driving down a street this unprotected scared mm. the shit out of me now i realize i'm being ridiculous because how protected am i in a car you well, know yeah, but you're not you're, it's it's the I, I do the same thing. You look down at the street and you're going 70 miles an hour and that pavement is moving pretty damn fast. You better be alert. It's yeah. the other people you're more worried about than yourself, really. And, you know, and I said to myself, uh, I'm going to fix the, the, you know, probably be a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars in repairs, but I'm going to fix it and I'm going to ride it again because I got to get back on the horse. Yeah. You know, if you if you fall off, I can't I can't be fearful of it. I've, I've got to get back on. Yeah. And then maybe I'll sell it, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to let it beat me. You've got to prove yourself to so the let me, let, me, let me ask you yeah. a question. Uh, here we have three people who are calling this program tonight uh, who apparently aren't paying attention to the baseball game. It's on right behind me, but it's a pretty boring game. Really? Well, how's it going? What's the It's 5 nothing. It was 5 nothing when I looked before in one, one inning? Uh, top of the sixth, two outs. Top of the sixth, because in the third, the t uh, the end of the third, they were five zero. Who's got yeah. the two outs? Huh? Uh, the 
Houston up? is up. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Houston is up. It's 5-0. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I have the permission of the commissioner of baseball. I, I, just, I, am. <laughs> I just got an email from the commissioner of baseball giving me permission to give a description of the game. So you can tell me what go. the score is. Play by play. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I guess uh, I guess there are a lot of people watching that. It's uh, I just looked at they Rudge said they said they I, yeah sure they said there are people watching that game who never watch baseball. It's been a good series. It's just that this they, this, this game here you expected it to be one to nothing or something. And, who, in the first inning it was two to nothing. People who love baseball say this may be one of the best series ever. I say that every year. I hate that because every year it's always the best series. It's always well, the no, best I, series. I've, I, I've, I've known some that were pretty boring. You know, sometimes when yeah. the Mets played the Yankees, it could get very boring. Yeah. You know, and, Ma- and, mainly for the rest of the country because nobody gave a shit. Yeah. You know, it was like when the Giants Six, were playing, just, when the Giants were playing the Oakland A's, uh, the rest of the country couldn't give a shit. It was happening in San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you were a Giants fan, you were getting beat so bad anyway. It didn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, and then us A's fans, you know, because of the earthquake, it was like, okay, let's go over and celebrate on the fourth, uh, fifth game. You know, when it was over with, oh, let's go celebrate. And I couldn't go to Jack London Square and celebrate when the Cypress was collapsed behind us. Well, my appreciation of baseball, <laughs> my appreciation of baseball was exacerbated when I was asked to throw out the first pitch. Oh, cool! Uh, at a at an A's game, so I go out to the 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 mound. Now, mind you, I don't play baseball, and I've basically never pitched a ball in my life. You know, my father took me to the ballet. All right, <laughs> so I'm out there. I'm on the pitcher's mound, and they say, "Okay, you got to throw it to the you know to to home base or whatever that thing is called, home plate." And I look. And it looks like it's a fucking mile away. You have no idea how far (laughs) the distance is between the pitcher's mound and home plate. I mean, on TV, it looks because, you know, they're shooting from behind and it's a telescopic lens. It it looks to be, you know, this far away. It's fucking, I mean, I was, uh, so I, with everything I had in me, I threw the ball. And I made it to home plate and hit the uh, the uh, umpire right in the crotch. That was good. Oh, very good, very good. Yeah. And then uh, you know it, 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 they put my name on the you know the billboard the with the lights and everything. And I, it was one. It was a good day. But you that got was to good. listen to it for the next week, right? Well, I knew the guy who owned the team. Yeah, Walter uh, uh, Wally Haas. Wally Haas. Wally Haas. And I, I, he lived across the street from me when I lived on Green Street. Well, Wally called me, uh, said to me one day uh, when I had him on the show, he said, listen, give me a call anytime you want to go to an A's game, and I'll make sure you got good tickets and everything like that. So I, I figured I'll take him up on it because my girlfriend loves baseball, right? She, so so we, uh, we go down there, and uh, we have our tickets, and I give them the tickets, and they say, okay, well, let's lead you up to your seats. And they take us all the way up the very top of the Oakland A's stadium. Our back, our back is against the back wall. That's how far up we were. The guy yeah. sitting next to me was flying the night mail to St. Louis. You know, I mean, <laughs> it was it was that far up. So I watched the game. And, of course, girl, the girlfriend is looking at me like, hey, yeah, sure, you know. <laughs> He really, you're, in, you're in good with Wally Haas. He must hate you with these seats, you know. <laughs> so I go on the air the following day and I say, you have no idea. I, 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 I got tickets to the A's game and they put me up like, and I just described it like I described it to you guys. And the next thing I know, I'm getting a call after the show from Wally. And he says, really? I told him to give you some tickets and they gave you those tickets? I said, yeah. He says, let me make it up to you. Come back next week, and the next week we were behind. We were behind the dugout, in his right. seat. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, it's down at the bottom. And uh, my oh, my my below. girlfriend, my girlfriend brought a catcher's mitt with her. This is what a big fan she was, 
And yeah. when, when a ball went up and so on, she kept trying again, but they never came her way. And when in, we, as we're going home, she's depressed because she didn't catch a ball. <laughs> and I said to her, you had the fucking best seats in the house. Who gives a shit whether you caught a ball or not? You don't understand. I wanted to catch a ball. Well, you know, come on. You know, what are you, retarded? What is this all about? Hey, yeah. I noticed Kevin's uh, shirt, Hardly Strictly Bluegrass. The guy who started that, uh, Hellman, uh, my friend worked for the his parents and ran their estate. Uh, he lived in Menlo Park. And uh, I, I, I think the Hellmans uh, owned Wells Fargo Bank, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I think Warren Hellman, the son, uh, started that hardly strictly bluegrass uh, festival and financed it. Uh, yeah, I, I can't so, remember what the whole story is, but they he died and he left all this money to just do this every year. Yeah, well, they, he had more money than God. Yeah, the Hellmans were were. Uh, I he uh, my friend showed me a letter from Ansel Adams that uh, Warren Hellman's mother received and was given to my friend, and he had it framed. And uh, I guess the Hellmans used to donate a lot of money to Ansel Adams. And so, you know, I oh. saw the letter, and I took a picture of it. It was a very interesting letter. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, they, they were very generous people. Yeah. yeah. And well, I guess the son was, too. Okay, well, that's boring. That's no, that's well, that's a that's a that's an important festival in uh, in uh, San Francisco. Yeah, but yeah. Well, important, to, it, important uh, to you. Uh, yeah, sometimes you bring this show to a grinding halt, and I thought it, that was my this job. show came to a grinding halt at no. seven oh one. Well, uh, oh, ten oh one your time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, yeah, no. I hear, it, but when you come on, the grinding halt alarm goes off. Well, you know. <laughs> well, we we uh, haven't lost any participants. <laughs> No, we haven't gained any, although we do have uh, quite a few people watching us. And uh, how about listening to us? Uh, let me see here. Let me look over here at the uh, thing that tells you how many people are listening. Uh, you know, I, 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 let's see here. Oh, well, no, we got quite a few people listening to us as well. So apparently the game isn't, isn't ruining us. Uh, it's not helping a hell of a lot, but, you know, it's not... Uh, it's well, not uh, well, this is the white noise for the game. <laughs> yeah. This is the white noise for the game? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Listen to us, ladies and gentlemen. Aren't we terrific? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, uh, but uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah. So, anyway. Uh, if anybody wants to call, you know, it would be really nice because we're, 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 uh, uh, we're having baseball difficulties. Yeah. Um, you know, this, uh, I understand. I mean, hell, if I were one of you, I'd be watching the game instead of listening to me. In fact, every <laughs> night I'd be doing something besides listen to me. So, you know. I haven't watched any of the games. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm missing anything. Well, you don't now, have any vested interest in it. You know, if it were like a San Francisco team or something, you might have a vested interest in it. I don't know if but, I even watched that. But, <laughs> huh? But, uh, yeah. yeah. The, uh, so, uh, what other uh, conversational topics do we have? Uh, uh, I've fallen off my motorcycle. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're hardly strictly bluegrass. Uh, you have about zero, as much interest in that as you have in baseball. The, so, well, I, I happen to like bluegrass, to tell you the truth. Yeah. I think the world of it, actually. Um, but let me let me let me. Well, let then you should go see the uh, the new play that started out in New York there on Off Broadway on Manetta Theater. What? What's uh, that? It's a, it's a Grateful Dead based play, but it's not really. It's based. Uh, it's a play about the uh, Cumberland Blue Mines, Cumberland Blues Mines, and a family that goes through that whole trouble. But the music is all old Grateful Dead bluegrass era type Jerry Garcia music. Mm -hmm. And my neighbor across the street here wrote it. He's been oh, writing really? it for the last 20 years, and he finally opened it last Sunday on uh, at Manetta Theater. Off-Broadway. Yeah. yeah. Can you get Alex oh. Comp some tickets? I don't know. I haven't talked to him. He won't, talk, he won't call me back now. <laughs> Very busy guy. <laughs> well, but, uh, here are a couple of... Uh, he actually he moved out uh, back up to San Jose about a month and a half ago. But he's lived over here for 20 years working on the damn thing, and... 
Well, here, it's actually doing pretty good, I guess. You know? Here are a couple of uh, stories that just don't seem to die. Okay. Red roses, green gold. That's my plug. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, let me, let me uh, uh, as you know, last night we did a whole thing on uh, the, the uh, current American fad of outing people and trying to ruin their careers by doing so and maybe enhance your own in the process. Okay, and uh, uh, it just seems like every day there are more people that get outed for some kind of minor infraction of the harassment laws. Okay, the latest one that is, uh, there's one that's kind of questionable. His name is uh, Brett Ratner. He's a director. Uh, and I have never liked Brett Ratner as a director, so quite frankly, I don't give a fucking shit about whether he loses his career or not over this. Uh, at least it'll stop him from making a lot of shitty films. Uh, you know, but he, uh, he is the latest one uh, to uh, be in the middle of that fallout of the Harvey Weinstein scandal. Uh, he's the director of the Rush Hour movies, two-time Oscar... Oh, and then also... Uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, the report by the Los Angeles Times details allegations against director Ratner by women, including uh, a lack, uh, uh, actress Olivia Munn, who I happen to like. She's very good. Catherine Town, Jamie Ray Newman, and Natasha Hen Henstridge. Yeah, well, you know who she is. She was on CSI, wasn't she? If I'm not mistaken. I don't know. Uh, anyway. Munn's these account includes details of an incident she says happened in L.A. around uh, the time when she was starting out back in 2004. Munn told the Times he walked out with his belly sticking out, no pants on, shrimp cocktail in one hand, and was furiously masturbating in the other. Now, I, it could be, I don't know about you, but if I've ever gotten a good sauce. if I've gotten a really good shrimp occasionally, I've wanted to jerk off. Uh, you know, um, it's a cocktail <laughs> and therefore I literally could even figure out where, where to escape or where to look. He ejaculated. Oh, what is with these guys? That, sounds that, like well, shit to me. Huh? You know, it sounds like made up stuff. They, 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 uh, they just, got, uh, accused the guy from NPR. Well, the, uh, it, some guy from NPR. Yeah. I never heard yeah. of him, but he. Uh, yeah. So, you know, everybody. Oh, but turns here, around here, here, here comes the biggie for the day. Yeah. Dustin Hoffman. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, he... It seems as though um, uh, uh, Hoffman is the focus of a guest column in the uh, Hollywood Reporter by writer Anna Graham uh, Hunter, who says Hoffman sexually harassed her when she was 17 year old intern on the set of the 1985 TV movie Death of a Salesman. Uh, again, this is a case where Hoffman said he doesn't remember the incident, but if it did happen, I'm terribly sorry because that's so unlike me. Uh, now, he, each of these people is coming back with a better answer than the last one. That was the <laughs> same thing. The only thing Hoffman didn't say is that he's gay. You know, the, yeah. uh, you know, you no, said but he did night. admit, he did admit that he's Jewish. So, oh, you know, uh, same, same thing. <laughs> So, but you said last night that, uh, you know, when these things happen, uh, you should never, uh, apologize for it, that it makes you seem guilty. And then it made me think Trump never apologizes, uh, for, for anything, but everybody gets on him for not apologizing. Well, nobody is, nobody seem, most people seem to have a very foggy memory where Trump is concerned, but do you remember the whole thing about him and the junior Miss America pageant or whatever that he was? Uh, in the, so he, he walked into their dressing room. Dressing room, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, did he count the shrimp? That, and that was his, uh, no, he wasn't carrying shrimp. <laughs> no, that, that was his penis. Uh, <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, seven count prawn. Yeah, seven count prawn. <laughs> Cocktail sauce. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I you know, cocktail sauce. Uh, I don't. I'm I'm really bothered by all of these accusations. Uh, you know, I don't know. As so far as Ratner is concerned, I don't give a rat fuck about him because I, I think he's a terrible director. 
But I do, you know, I do care about a guy like Dustin Hoffman who, hey, you know, how many of us here in this room at one time or another have been out on a date and attempted a kiss? Just something simple like that. Well, that sort of thing now can be considered sexual harassment if somebody wants to make it so. And I was just talking to my wife about that same thing tonight. And, and, uh, and think about, because something happened here in town recently, that, you know, there was a local page here and somebody got on the page and said, uh, said something about a local teacher here and then hashtagged it, me too. Yeah. And that was an accusation about a, a teacher somewhere in town. I don't want to get into too many details, but you know, it's getting down to the, it's getting down to the local. It's, it's getting and down to being, people, it's getting down to being a witch hunt. You the won't hear about man. those people that yeah. really need their jobs. They aren't backed up by millions of dollars. And well, those uh, I mean, if tomorrow, if, to, if, if, if starting tomorrow, Kevin Spacey never works again, I'm sure he's pretty well off and can, right. you know, can, right. can live but out his talented. life happily. happily. He what? Su he's such a talented actor. It would be a shame if he didn't work again. Exactly. You know, uh, he was in Glen Gary, Glen Ross. He was in uh, uh, the Beauties with the uh, Rose. You know, uh, uh, what was that one uh, uh, with with the American Beauty? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, plus he, 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 plus he told us about his private life all these years. Well, he's always um, uh, everybody's known that he's gay, but uh, he, he's he's such a talent. It would be a real loss uh for uh, uh for for people in general if he never worked again right but it's kind of like the purge there's a, a huge purge going on yeah yeah well no it, it no it's a witch hunt it's you know yeah. no, you, you know what makes it makes the whole problem the biggest problem is some of these guys some of the guys not only a very small percentage are really creeps though <laughs> and everybody's yeah. getting sucked in based on thinking of Weinstein and what stuff he was doing. And, you know, that's cr the creepiness. Well, I asked my wife, I asked my wife a thing that we brought up last night. And that was uh, if uh, Harvey Weinstein uh, came over and tried to kiss you, what would you do? She said, I'd slap him. I said, then, what, yeah. what, I said what if George Clooney tried the same thing? She said, I'd fuck him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I said. So what we're really saying is that a Harvey Weinstein is a terrible person because he's fat and ugly. You know. So what's the yeah. name? But of his, also, what's the name oh, of his autobiography going to be? Caligula. It, well, the, you know it, what's going to happen. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I you know. I mean, Weinstein's a creepy guy, but he always was a creepy guy. People hated him in Hollywood, and they were waiting for something to happen where they could all pounce on him, and that's exactly what happened. But yes, what, but what happened but, is, but, as a result, the, the, the residual fallout of this is like Kevin Spacey is an example. Now, I've got a story here. Last night, I was watching tonight, was watching This Is Us. Girlfriend loves the show. I liked it last year. I think it's kind of getting, it's, it's trying to pull on your heartstrings too much every week. And, you know, that can, yeah, get, a little, yeah. that can get a little boring. So in the show last night, uh, it goes, it goes back into the past, and the the brother in the family uh, is working as a hairdresser in Hollywood, uh, and uh, he's trying to get parts in movies. And his roommate gets a part in a movie. He says, "I just got a part in a film," and he said, "Congratulations!" Blah 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 blah. Well, I didn't know till I read tonight in Deadline Hollywood that the actual line that was cut out by NBC was, so I got a part in a film. And uh, he said, oh, that's great, that's terrific. And he says, yeah, it's a Kevin Spacey film. Oh, Jesus. And NBC went back and edited out the fact that it was a Kevin Spacey film. Or as uh, Deadline Hollywood uh, put it, or as this put it, Kevin Spacey name check edited out of NBC series, given to a different actor. Uh, so, I mean, it says one of the least important, uh, 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 still, uh, but still t uh, uh, telling, setbacks for 
actor Kevin Spacey as he deals with the fallout from accusations they made sexual advances towards an underage boy is that Spacey lost the privilege of being name-checked on the NBC series This Is Us. Uh, Tuesday's episode of the NBC drama con included a 2008 flashback scene in which the stu struggling actor learns that his roommate has gotten a role in a major movie. In the scene filmed before Spacey was accused of sexual misconduct, the thrill roommate refers to a Kevin Spacey film, but 20th Century Fox Television, which produces This Is Us, said it removes Spacey's name, citing the recent events. You, you know what's funny? Is these people are all struggling actors, right? And that are playing the parts. Uh, it, yes. Uh, you know, and, 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 and I think the guy, the, the guy that plays him uh, is in that new Bad, Bad Mom's Christmas movie. I've seen the previews. Yeah, well, uh, he's also on uh, uh, the, the guy accused, um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, God, my mind is blank. Uh, 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 hold on a second. What, what's wrong with me tonight? Man, I'm out of it tonight. Uh, no, Kevin Spacey, the, the, the accused Kevin Spacey, is on Star Trek Discovery. The new Star Trek. Yeah, I've seen Trek that, show. but I've only seen the first episode because yeah. I don't want to pay to see him. Yeah, but uh, one he, more episode than I've than I've watched. Yeah, well, Trek. anyway, uh, boy, I'm, why did my mind go blank there? I feel so terrible about that. Maybe it's time to maybe it's time to hang it up. Yeah, well, anyway, your mind will only uh, turn to dribble if you do, because then you won't be. Then it'll turn to yourself. totally dribble. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so. Uh, the, the fact is that uh, I think it was, um, uh, uh, what's his name from Entourage? Uh, uh, Piven. Jeremy yeah. Piven. Jeremy Piven, that's correct. Who yeah. said that he felt that, he said, the story that was fabricated about me is total, he didn't say bullshit, but he said fabrication or something to that effect. And he said, and what makes it even more terrible is it dismisses and makes smaller the justified claims against somebody like Weinstein, you know, and, he, yeah. and, and he's absolutely right. I mean, yep. uh, you dem by these, like somebody griping about uh, Dustin Hoffman, who this woman said was a creep, but she really liked him. Really strange interview, right? Uh, Maybe she was a little nuts. Could be, could be. But it, what, that does is it diminishes the women who truly have a grievance against somebody. And now all these women are coming forward, and, and some of them, like against Ratner, may be right. But how, yeah. how am I to believe them? Why did they come now and say I, this? Hey, why, Alex, why, didn't they, why didn't they sue him before? Why didn't they, they go they to the police? They didn't have the power or the money to, to do it. Well, you say they didn't have the power the or the money. The sentence, Alex? Huh? All well, you finished the sentence. All publicity is. It's good not. Publicity. No, it's not true. Ask Kevin Spacey. No, uh, ask but ask uh, that ask are coming one, forward well, are getting their names uh, in the news and they're getting their thirty seconds of fame and possibly discovered for anything else that they can they can do. I mean, some of them are you know are are actresses and actors. That, Most of these uh, accusations, don't... like the accusation against Dustin Hoffman, is just that he I think he slapped her on the ass or something. That's it. You hmm. know. Hey, hey, do you know what could have saved Kevin Spacey? What? If, what? He, sell, if he sold himself short. In other words, does he have insurance that if his his uh, uh, um, uh, goodwill crashes that his insurance will pay him. That's how, that's got to be a London thing. I, that, that's that's pretty far fetched. Uh, I'm sure that well, the, all the all the sports people have that. Why wouldn't an actor? Most people's mouths is insured. And no, they, there there is no insurance for this sort of thing. But get this now. Here's where this whole thing winds up. You know. Now we're talking about the piffle that's happening, like, you know, NBC editing out uh, Kevin Spacey's name from This Is Us, okay? Um, we get now to this story. A town in Britain will burn a 36-foot effigy of disgraced film mogul Harvey Weinstein at its annual bonfire night celebrations. Right uh, next to Trump. 
Yeah, they got e- one for e- Christmas each too. year the uh, Edenbridge Bonfire Society chooses a well-known figure to go up in flames <laughs> alongside <laughs> the effigy of a 17th century militant Guy Fox. The story reports the society says the movie mogul was the obvious choice after many women made allegations of sexual harassment and assault against him. The effigy unveiled Wednesday appears in a bathrobe holding a Hollywood star and a clapboard with final cut on it. The story reports. The only problem is it looks like fire steam. Yeah, it'll be it'll be burned on Saturday in the southern England town. So, you know, I guess I don't know, maybe 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 that's a good thing for him. Maybe that's that's the good publicity we're talking about. As long as Weinstein doesn't die on the same day. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. Uh, I I was just looking uh there's this uh, gal I know that's a uh, tech writer for the New York Times, and uh, she she says uh, in on Facebook she says that uh, uh, have you ever bought something on Facebook at, on a targeted ad? Uh, and I'm thinking about it. You know, I've bought several things on Facebook, be, uh, targeted ads that you know seem to appeal to me. What kind of ads do you get, Alex, for instance, uh, targeted to you? What kind of stuff? For some reason, and I don't know why, and it's true also on Girlfriend's Machine, there mm-hmm. are no ads on my Facebook page. Really? No ads. You know, no. I, I've bought uh, pens that were really cool looking that yeah. could also break glass <laughs> and open a can. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I've bought... Uh, hey, I got an endoscope. <laughs> oh yeah, the endoscope. I've been looking at. Uh, I, I bought special uh, special cables uh, that don't break for oh, your yeah. phone, uh, and all you know, all sorts of junk that. Yeah, but uh, I don't get now. This is strange, and I've often wondered why. But I do not get ads on mine. Huh. Can you turn them off? Is and, there? And, a and I'll tell you. I even have, for instance, my. Uh, uh, it could be that my Chrome does it. But then I look over here at my uh, Safari. There are no ads on the Safari either. I, and then I, I bought a jacket. It was 160 bucks. And what it was was it was a jacket that you could wear when you travel, and you could put your iPad in it. You can put your phone. It would hold a, a, a laptop. My friend Shacky, Shacky bought one of those. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and that was the jacket I was wearing when I went down on my motorcycle. So it was the second time I wore it. Now it's uh, damaged, so I got to buy another one. <laughs> yeah, I like it. it. Even came with a hood, <laughs> and that was a targeted ad on Facebook. The bed I bought, uh, Amerisleep, another targeted ad on ba- on Facebook. One of those uh, Tempur Pedic. Well, I got to tell you, I don't get any ads on my Facebook now. You know how the hell right, does that work? It's to the right hand side, right of the page. They run all these ads. Am I correct? Yeah. There, well, I'm talking phone, in the news on the phone. On the phone, they're in the, they're in, the uh, they're in the feed. Yeah, they just as you're f- scrolling through your feed, they pop up there, and they're just well, they're they, everywhere. They don't show up on my on my desktop. But let me look. Uh, I'll go to my Facebook. Uh, go to Facebook here and see if I get any ads. Uh, yeah, maybe it's yeah because I get them on my iPad all the time. That's the only place I really look at Facebook is on my iPad. No, I'm not, I, it doesn't look like it. But hold on a second, Alex Bennett. Let me see here. Here's my page. And you know, you there, notice there, there are no ads. There, there are no ads on my iPhone. If you go to look for something on the web, like you know, you're sur- surfing for something on Safari, and then you know the next day. You know, you click into a something on Amazon or something. The next day, it shows up in your news feed. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was looking at a camera, and I bought it, but uh, I didn't buy it from uh, one of the online ads. But now, every time I look at Amazon, boom, yeah. the Nikon D850 comes up. Well, yeah. they pop hey, you up on Facebook too. Too. Hey, Phil, you know what's going to happen next? No. Uh, you, as the AI gets more sophisticated, you'll be talking to Siri or Alexa. Or one of those, or Cortana. But here's Cortana, what here, here's what I do they get. Will, they will suck you into buying stuff. Yeah. Oh, they they, they they know you're like they know everything. They more they what know is, more about you than any human on this earth. That's true. 
But well, Alex you know, just showed us something on camera, and I didn't know what it was. Well, that was just it's just the show, Facebook, the show oh, on yeah. Facebook. But I don't have any ads on on here either. I don't get any ads. Yeah, I thought only the uh, CIA uh, undercover agents could. You know, could Facebook face tracks face. every time you touch that screen. They track whether you touch the left side of the screen, the right side of the screen, the center of it. And that's they how they you, place things they, like that. They monitor people in Walmarts now, and now they're going to have robots. And oh, they're starting out with the several hundred stores. The robots will go around and check on the humans. The human employees would check to make sure the shelf is is properly stocked and priced right. <laughs> this and, this uh, guy I listened to, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. He's uh, an expert on the web, for instance, uh, and social media. And uh, he was saying that there's in the phone. They already know where you are, and oh, yeah. uh, and then they and they know. Uh, uh, for okay, instance, hold on what a second. Everybody, for. stop, stop, yeah. and think about yeah. something for a second. Nobody's telling you you have to use Facebook. No, yep. nobody's telling you you have to use Twitter. But or if you, but, but how do you Nobody think? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Coke, oh, but I do. Oh, I gotta drink oh, Hold on but, a second. Well, hold yeah. on a second. Uh, All right. uh, 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 Tim. Tim. Here's the big question. You're getting these services for free. You don't think they're going to want something back in return? And if yep. you don't want yeah. them to if they, you don't want them to follow what you're doing, cancel your subscription to Facebook, cancel your subscription to Twitter. No, you can't. You, you know, yes, you can, you can Tim. Order, yes, you can. McDonald's you, without a yes, you can. Even if you so want you can't some, because you're addicted to them. Because that's your form no, of communication. I don't, use my smartphone. I don't use it. It isn't a matter of using your smartphone. I see you putting stuff up on my site all the time. You use Facebook like crazy. I'm sure you use oh, Twitter. Yeah, I just don't carry the phone around. I what I'm saying is you don't want friend. them to have all this information on you. Just quit Facebook. At the end of the day, they're going to find you somehow, so who gives a shit? What, what I was talking about with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk is that there's a chip in the phone, and it, and it knows your location. Yeah. And so if you're shopping for something, it figures out what you're shopping you for can and sends you off. coupons. You can turn that off. It, it's, you it, can turn it, it, it off. It's through your garbage, Phil. It, it, it's, it's got it, all your search history from right. whenever you've been on the web for, it, for years. Yep. Right, it, it, so it, it's something I think called a new field chip or something like that, and uh, yes, so what you can turn is, you can turn it off. Yes, you can. Right, but yes. a lot of people don't because they don't even know that it's happening. So let's say you're looking at potato chips, then all of a sudden you get a you get a coupon for 50, 50 cents off a of Wise potato chips, and you know. I don't so know which, where you, you guys know? are getting all this shit because I use my computers like crazy and I don't get any of this shit. The only time I get that. Is is when I'm for instance I go to uh, Deadline uh, Hollywood, yeah. which or de de Deadline Hollywood, which I go to all the time, uh, and at the very top there may be an ad, and it's like a B and H ad because I I look at B and H every now and then, or well, may, or if I was I, eating I potato know. chips at my, but it says ad choice on there, and they they're targeting to you because they know what you have looked at. That right. you know, but I'm looking at you Deadline Hollywood. I'm looking at Deadline Hollywood, and I'm getting it for free. Well, you okay? know, I figured out why you're not getting the ads. What happens is they know that you don't buy anything. You're a stiff, and you want it for free. Uh, or, That's or how well they know us, Alex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, you, you he know what else? He won't go. <laughs> Maybe somebody on the internet or something can can write on the chat. Why I am not seeing any of these uh, these ads? Uh, I don't get them. I, in fact, I've wondered for a year now why on Facebook I do not get ads. Yeah, you might, maybe you have hackers in your building that uh, are controlling. Nah. Nah. No, and I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it on any other browsers as well. I don't get oh, really? it on. I, 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 yeah, I, I would it, like to find that out. Girlfriend has a girl, girlfriend has a different account, which is her account, and when I go to her pay over there to well, look at her uh, her browser, there are no ads on Facebook. Apparently, you, you know when you what was the in the old days? What was what, what the hint was? I feel you had left funny out. Noises on your phone. I I bet you FBI is monitoring you, and they got to turn that noise off to, nah. to get a better picture of you. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, 
You know, there are people that, who no, go around. Very, right, very honest. I don't know anybody else. Where's that little My thing? My ads even pop up in the middle of articles when I'm reading. I'm reading an article, and there's a picture, but it's part of an ad. No, I, there are ads okay. that target you that are in, like, when you go to some kind of site or something. Yeah. Right, in the there, middle of it. There, yeah. are, there are targeted ads based upon your browsing and so on. Absolutely. Uh, I don't get it on so, Facebook, but I get it on a lot of other things. Like I said, Deadline Hollywood. Right. I think you would probably get it if you read Drudge uh, or, or any of those. But that's how these people make a living. They're not giving this thing away for free. Nothing's free. You know, I love people who say to me, you know, I watch, uh, I, I saw that movie last night for free on Netflix. No, you didn't see it for free on Netflix. You paid nine ninety five a month yeah. to be able to get Netflix. Exactly. Nothing's free, all right. And uh, uh, I just uh, this also knows. This also means the government knows everything about you too. Hey, the the government. Look, this is we're li You know, you can go off the grid if you truly want to, t Tim. You can get no, off. I know the grid. that. I just I'm, I'm taking my chances and. Trying to be normal. No, you're not but trying to be I, normal. You like writing on the web. You like uh, people paying attention to what you write, uh, and you use it. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to use it, don't complain about them having information on you because they're no, going no, to. Have information I, I'm not on complaining. You. I'm just saying we somebody should be maybe FCC or somebody should be controlling this stuff. Do you see where they released the Russia ads today? Some of the Russia ads that was on Facebook. For yeah. The yeah. So, so, so and how how effective they so are? So what? So they what? Were clearly sophisticated. They paid. For they how paid, many of those things I bought? They, pay, <laughs> they wait a minute. They paid for those ads, uh, and quite frankly, I think that if I were running a company, anybody who wanted to buy an ad, unless it was something that would physically hurt them well, and be dangerous, well, this was, this I, was, I, I this would say I would. Fake news they were putting out. That doesn't matter. You know, it, that doesn't matter. You buy an ad. Look. When you buy, when people buy an ad, they make claims all the time that's fake news. That's that's it's called advertising, Tim. Right, but but there's certain things you can't. That is you, you can't lie about everything. Yes, you, you can. You can lie on the internet. You can lie about anything you want to. There is no law preventing you from lying. You know, what I'm saying we should have the same rules. Oh it's, it's well, now are you talking? Are you talking about? Are you, are you talking about? Are you talking about censorship? I'm talking about some. You know, how are we going to keep the Russian ads off? you got to have some kind of... Uh, you're not going to keep the Russian ads off. You sell to the Russians just like you sell to anybody else. As long no, as no, 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 I'm not as, talking. As well, long, I, wait a minute. As long as they're, mean, uh, wait a minute. Hold on I a mean, second, Tim. As long as, as long as their money is green, then you should take it. If I if if tomorrow somebody wants to buy time on GabNet well, and they want to... It's illegal to do that stuff during the election. No, it isn't. No, it is an illegal, Phil, uh, 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 yeah. Tim. It isn't illegal at all. It, it may be illegal in normal broadcasting because that's being no, that's being covered. Wait a minute, that's being controlled by the FCC. No, isn't if you pay for printing elections? or anything with foreign money, uh, you can't accept foreign money to pay for parts of the. Well, the money may have been American dollars. How do they know it was no, foreign? Some of money? it was rubles. Uh, they said well, they, they, they did it. They did it both ways. They changed it over to dollars once they. Uh, uh, I heard they the guy testify. The guy testified from Twitter and said they received rubles. Yeah. For some of the counts, that's the ones. Because at first, the very beginning, these companies were saying, "Oh no, we didn't have any Russian ads. We had nobody selling selling the stuff." Or it wasn't just the ads. They found a lot of fake news that was targeted too that they did for free. So amazingly cheap. I, I just don't know why you're so upset by this. I mean, the fact is that uh, people uh, take out ads all the time and lie like crazy. No, the, why especially did the French get upset at it? Because they got upset because the, their election. The, because the French get upset at everything. Okay. Well, because the French, be, be, uh, but you know, if yeah, you, but the French, strike. the French stands for freedom. What, freedom. You know, I'm, uh, you know, the, and then they're talking about the fact that the Russians also created fake Facebook accounts, or not fake Facebook accounts, actual Facebook accounts, and and uh, we're sitting there and uh, you know uh, spreading all kinds of lies and things like right. that. Well, how many lies do you read every day on Facebook? Right, but not not not, not to. Not to tear down your, your democracy. So I think there needs to be, um, if you're an American, you should be able to do what you want as long as it's not hateful speech. 
But if you're well, a foreigner, no, now you're, I think now, you now you're, now you're, now you're, now you're, now you're, now, now you're making an exception. I think hateful speech should be allowed as well. And I'll tell you Except what, for, I'll tell you, the, I'll there's, there's two that should be accepted. One would probably be too much Nazi stuff. I, I just, I just sent uh, no, Tim. But you're making, uh, wait a minute, Tim, Tim's making, Tim's making all kinds of exceptions. Right. You know. I just sent uh, uh, this this friend of mine. She posted uh, the several of the ads that were paid for by the Russian the Russian sponsored ads, and she's asking yep. if anybody buy anything from them. I just sent one to I just sent it to you, Alex, on your messenger and Tim. I, I didn't have Mike or Kevin's. Uh, uh, I, uh, were the Russians actually physically selling stuff? Uh, well, one of them says, "Don't." Well, you can see the ads. Uh, it doesn't look like they were selling anything. Well, one was "Don't mess with Texas Border Patrol." The other was uh, "We the People." Your voice in the White House. Uh, something. Another. Oh, do you want this? It looked like it was an uh, anti-Muslim ad. Then there's a Bernie Sanders uh, Clinton Foundation is a problem, and a, one other one that says uh, another okay, abuse right, attack right, on right, police well, by it, Black it, Lives yeah, Matter. Well, anyway, the point. The point. So the point. Those is, are the what, kinds of ads what, that what, uh, what that trying, the Russians placed. What I'm trying to say I, here is is that what is you know, where do we draw the line on any of this stuff? You know, where do, where do we uh, where do, where do we say that? Okay, I believe in a democracy, but this is where I where it stops. Well, you you have a line where it hurts somebody else. No, well, wait a minute. Now, how, do you, how do you incites, how do you determine how do you well how do you determine that? Now, none of these well, ads, it's, none it's, of these it's, ads, very, none, very, of the, very limited, limited, none of these but, ads did any of that. From what well, I can see, you know, I, they, I, I draw the line uh, where they have large discounts on carpet sales. Yeah, now, yeah, that's where you draw <laughs> the line. By that's where I draw the line. Yeah, <laughs> that was my callback for tonight. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you know, I mean, all I got to say is it it, it just um, amazes me that uh, uh, Tim that that but you don't but, understand that you know you're getting this these things for nothing and. Uh, and everybody has access to them, you know. How do how do you stop how do you stop uh, the Russians from having access to Facebook? Well, you know, Facebook and and, and Facebook Twitter is a fucking is a fucking whore. Facebook no, I, I, will I fuck that, will fuck but anybody. Their engineers are very sophisticated, and they know everything that's going on on Facebook, and they're to make their stuff better. They know a lot more. They know exactly what's going on on Facebook. Hey, they listen, I, I, look, I'm on, I want to tell you what, I, what I'm bothered by, okay? I have 5,000 yeah, people uh, who are friends on my Facebook page. Right now, four ninety nine. okay? Now, oh. now, it went down to four ninety nine. Anytime it goes under the 5,000 and I can let somebody on, okay, all of a sudden, I see that there's one person who wants to be my friend. Now, do you think that's somebody that I really know who it is? Probably not. No, it's not. a bot from Russia. It, no, it's it's usually some fucking slut from uh, from you know somewhere. Who, and, and Facebook knows that's going on. You know why they don't stop it? Well, yet yeah, why? Because they at some point those get funneled and they get clicks for people clicking on other websites. There's money in it for them, so they let it go on and kind of look the other way. That's why they're not going to stop it. They're making money on it, too. Yeah, well, I'm, all I'm saying is is that uh, I wish they would work at stopping that from happening because these are just bots that go searching for people, you know, for everything that's available and asking you to be a friend, and then you go to the thing and it's some woman showing you her tits. And, hey, uh, yeah, but some, many of those ads that, that Phil was reading there, Mm -hmm. uh, I, half the people I know, friends and relatives, would would just ch laugh about it. But the other half, there's half of the people I know that would would pass these on to other friends, and the, uh, the other friends would think it was not real news, but maybe underground news that might be true. All uh, I'm saying and, is, and, it, all I'm saying is, if it were not the Russians, but it was somebody else who loved Hillary, you wouldn't be here complaining about it. No, no, no but no, I'm just talking about. They shouldn't be able to spend money. They should be able to put buy ads on TV, right? But it's not. It doesn't matter to me. They just should not, are not allowed to spend any money helping out a campaign, not during the election. Why not? And I think, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why not? No, no, because it's part of the federal, uh, federal election law. It doesn't interfere with an election law. You know, you're talking about the internet, my friend. 
You're not talking. No, I'm not you, talking about. No, I'm, you, that's yeah, not a, yeah, wait a minute, Kevin. Kevin, did you want to say something, Kevin? You were holding your light up. Camera. Uh, no, no, I'm just playing around here while you guys are talking. Oh, I see. Okay, because usually it used to be that Phil had a had a laser, and then I would go I, chase I it across the floor. Little pen light. It's you know, my like, endoscope. I can put it on my butt for you if you want. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are you 50 yet? When you are, oh, by the way, is the game over yet? Is the game over yet? Uh, five to one, top of the eighth, two outs. Uh, not Houston doing so good. Ahead. And if it's top of the eighth, doesn't don't the Astros go first in the next uh, inning, or do they go last? I can't remember. No, they're batting right now. The, they're so, batting okay. right now. And, uh, and this is the bottom of the eighth. Top of the eighth. Top so. of the eighth. Okay. All right. Dodgers have two more chances. Yeah, uh, don't look good. Hey, no. uh, yeah, I, I get this uh, one every once in a while. I get a woman that uh, contacts me on Facebook, and this one sends me a messenger thing. She says, hey there, hey there. And it's got a picture of a reasonably good-looking woman, yeah. not a, and it doesn't look like a hooker. So uh, I, I write her back. I say, I'm oh, no. sorry, oh. how do I know you? And so uh, she says, I'm looking for my friend, and I came across your fantastic profile <laughs> and uh, 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 decided to add you, if you don't mind. Uh, Hillary. Yeah, so, Hillary I said, do so I said, okay, uh, do I know your friend? She says, no. Uh, she says, can we talk to each other more about each other? And I said, sorry, I'm not available for getting to know you. Good luck. And I and I banned her, but, uh, you know, I mean, what kind of, what kind of morons are these? Uh, you know, I mean, she looked like a reasonable you remember person. When we were younger, uh, you would have said I banged her, but now you say I banned her. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I don't, I, it's my fantastic profile. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> no, you but know. I mean, I've gotten that, uh, when I, before I got into this, I just, whenever somebody wanted to be a friend, I said, okay. And then all of a sudden I get somebody, a woman going, Hi there. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, why, don't you, why don't they teach them to say something more than hi there, you know, yeah. like uh, ask me a question or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Seemed like a real human. Well, we never player. had this when we were kids, you know. They're, now they're chasing after you. Uh, I, I don't know. There's got to be some ulterior motive. You know something? I uh, you, Nobody, nobody was more uh, uh, an advocate of a digital world and a digital lifestyle okay the future that i dreamed of is happening now okay yeah. i live to see it all right and i gotta tell you i wish we went back to analog yeah i yeah. really do yeah the advantages does anybody of know anybody written in a robotically driven car anybody know anybody uh, i i have a loner because mine is being serviced right now and this thing uh parks itself tells you if people are approaching you if you're using the uh the uh the uh automatic speed thing you know the uh, cruise control right. if cruise you if control. you're getting too close to another car or one pulls in your lane it slows you down uh, you hey, you're not ready for the digital world phil if you're saying um, if you say automatic speed thing yeah. that automatically disqualifies <laughs> you from entering into the digital world yeah the cruise control yeah. I used to fuck with the Google you're, you're, car on 101. Yeah. We'd see it on 101 no, I, going home once in a while. And I was, hey, I thought talking. cruise control meant that you were riding up and down the street looking for women. <laughs> well, that's cruise patrol. I, no, I thought it was keeping that senator from Texas. But, but, but from I, just, I, just, I just am beginning to realize that I grew up in an analog world. <laughs> and right, it was, and, we're going to be stuck in an analog world. And those were the days when I didn't have to worry about identity theft. Right. You know, I didn't have to worry about having some strange broad somewhere Facebook me and tell me that, uh, well, hey, what you doing? You want to meet me and my friend and you want me to show you my bosoms? You know. And for Renee, that. if Renee's listening, I said bosoms, Renee. Uh, identity theft in the mail. They used to steal the mail out of your mailbox. Yes, that was identity theft. No, identity theft. You know, uh, uh, but the the point is that this digital world has become a more impersonal world than the one we used to have. And it's become a much more dangerous uh, one 
which is fraught with all kinds of uh, missteps and problems and things like that that we never had before. And if you leave your cap lock on, people are mad at you. If you, uh, you know, if you don't get back to somebody's text uh, fast enough to, for their satisfaction, they're mad at you. I don't even turn my texts on. I have no notification on anything but the phone. I don't want to. If they send me a text, I'll answer it when I feel like answering it, which is when you, I you feel like. Phil, here, here's a simple. Somebody. Here's a simple problem you face every day with text. Yeah. When are you through texting with that person? I, other, I, I agree. You that, know, that, uh, do you, that always bugged do, me because, it, you, you know, in the radio world, it was yeah. always over or something like that or we're done, you know, threes o were over, done. Over and out. You're supposed to yeah, over and out. Coming from the speech. radio world, and now you're sitting there waiting for an answer or somebody to say, okay, we're done or bye, whatever. You just sit there and look at your phone. And by the or, way, uh, you know, yeah. I only have 200 messages a month because I never go over that anyway. Okay. Yeah. So I, I buy, I buy 200 messages a month. I don't go unlimited, which most kids would have to have because they do it like crazy. But when I, when somebody writes back, okay, that costs me money. Yeah. I usually right. use Facebook uh, messenger. It's, uh, and I think a lot of people use Facebook messenger instead of the phone messages. Well, you can well, tell if the watching person's you. alive and watching the screen. They're you watching you. Nick, you can tell if he's watching you. How can you tell? You're, you're Facebook is page. watching you. Know, you. At the top of the box, you click on the name and messenger, at least on Facebook, it'll yeah. tell you if the person is live on Facebook at that time. Uh, so you, you or, click and, rather than and rather than not looking at their phone, you know, or not having it on the, up on laptop, you'll know if who you look, actually you, has Facebook open. Okay. If so, you look at the agreement when you first signed up for Messenger, the agreement because I didn't do it for a long time because. You know, I didn't want anybody watching my shit, but I decided what the hell. And they said that, uh, you know, they have the right to look in there, and the whole bit is in the all in the agreement. So I never use that for anything except pie or I'm well, buying something give, or something give, like that. Right. Give, give, Don't put anything give, personal. Did you, yeah. you, know what, you know what they were passing around Facebook uh, about six months ago? No. What? They was passing around a questionnaire for you to answer questions and then send it on to all your friends and all your kids from high school, asking all personal things like your first dog's name, the first car you owned. Oh, well, they do that all, all the, the time. All the I things. like the intelligence. That, you, know what the, you know who uses that? All, uh, the, all three credit bureaus. If you want to access. No, no, you know who uses bureau, that? You know who uses that? People who want to steal your identity is who does yeah. that. Right. You can go right through there and steal your identity if you answer those questions and pass it around. Well, because those are the questions. Those are the questions that they ask you to answer when they want to have two questions to ask so that you can get into yes. something. You know, exactly. who, who was your best friend right. in high school? And uh, right. what street did what you street live did on? What did you live on? Uh, what school well, did I you go to? You know. I never answer those. But I yeah. do like to play the right. math twisters and the uh, the color identification things. I'm and doing the none of that shit. Things. You, you, you know what? I know, I know a friend who got divorced, is getting divorced. Yeah, and it, the phones were his, but his wife hacked into his account on Facebook and I think Google email and deleted a bunch of email and posted a bunch of garbage because she knew the answer to those secret questions when you're going to say you can't remember your password. Yeah, well, that's just an intrusion. That's all. Yeah, so you got to go in and make stuff <laughs> that's up. That's a hack. You ha when you answer those questions, you shouldn't tell them the truth. You should well, you make something answer. up. Just don't answer them. Tim, no, no, I mean, but, yeah, but you should never answer the truth. You should answer something that nobody else could figure out. Well, and all I'm all I'm saying is, is that that was not Facebook doing that, you know, but it's the kind of thing that Facebook should yeah. probably discourage and try and stop. You know? But they're making money on it, so they're not going to stop well, it. No, they're not making money on that. Well, it's the same thing, Tim, with those ones that come across. On ads from those people's pages, yeah, they make money. Uh, mm, on Facebook, no. On YouTube, they make money when you click on. No, something. no. I'm talking about you get these fake accounts trying to sign up as a friend for Alex. Mm -hmm. If people get onto their Facebook for these fake ones that are up for short periods of time like that, yeah. And then somebody clicks off of their those fake ones for a while. That's why they don't want to get rid of all those bots. It also ups their stats and makes their stocks look more because it's saying they had 
200 million customers when they really only had like 50 million because a lot of it was repetition or bots out there. That's a lot of work. So, that, but that's 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 that may you know they overstate the value of their stock. So you know you should have sell short on those stocks. Well, I mean they right say now. they have like two billion uh, members of Facebook, but how many of those are legitimate? Is the question right? right. And how many right. of those are still? Right. How many of those are still alive? As as they as as they become more, that's why they don't want to go in front of Congress because it's going to devalue their companies. They're probably all positioning themselves not to be in a position of holding way too much of their own company. Right, well, I looked the other day and it turned out that I had like five different accounts at Facebook, so I canceled all but two of them. Uh, right. You know, Gabnet Live and 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 my A Bennett. Um, but if you're a hacker, you probably have two or three hundred. No, but that was, but as I'm saying, one of them there, I forget, I didn't, didn't even spell my name right, so that's why I, I got another right. one, and it was there for I a long, got the junk longest mail time. With, I spelled my name wrong, wrong once, fifteen years ago, and I still get junk mail with my name spelled wrong. Really? From that first yeah. one thing, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yimothy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, all I'm saying is we're living in a world that is increasingly more dangerous because of, of the digitization of it, of it all. And, and it makes I, it more polarized because you, you only see the stuff that you believe in. You well, I think the, I think, I think the, the, problem, right the problem with Twitter and, and most of all Facebook is that their, their fame uh, has come so fast. Uh, that they don't realize the responsibilities that they should have, where all of this right. is concerned, and that if they, and they're making money, it's, they're making money on it hand over fist. And at what point do you jeopardize your own stockholders? Well, I mean, it's a question of do, how much do you protect your audience? And uh, you know, I've always been a great advocate of protecting your audience. That my job is never to put my audience in jeopardy. That's why right. I would never, for instance, they used to have me, they'd want me to do a live read for an ad. And I'd say, okay, show me the product and let me make sure it does what it says. Otherwise, right. I'm not, otherwise, I'm not going to do a live read for it because what's going to happen is that that would seem to imply my endorsement. And I'd want to make sure it doesn't hurt people and that it does what it says it's going to do. You know, and so I, and uh, they hated me over at Sirius because on many occasions I turned down live reads be precisely because I said, I got, I, uh, it was, what, was the, what was the flower company that we had? We had like 1800. Gaten was in, uh, when you were in San Francisco. No, 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 I, not, not in San Francisco. When I was at uh, Sirius XM. Uh, yeah, flowers. Well, 1 800 Flowers, I think, was it, or it, or it was. Uh, Internet. I can't remember what the company was. I think it was one eight hundred. What FTD? I don't think. No, no. It was one eight hundred flowers? Yeah. So they said, okay, and we're going to send you some flowers just to show you how good they are. And I went, that's fine. That's terrific. What? Oh, what is and, going on? Oh. What? 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 Did oh, they die? <laughs> anyway, are you okay, Kevin? He. I don't know what happened to him. I, I don't know, but uh, Mike is sleeping. Mike is sleeping. Um, no. Oh boy, this is really a great show. Mike, wake up! <laughs> Mike, he's going to give us the scores. Uh, wake up! Uh, oh, no, there you up. there you woke him up. You woke him up, Kevin. Good. You, you, you're already on the uh, the intersection, Mike. Uh, you slept through Alex's show. Hi, Amy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Amy. <laughs> uh, no, what was I? What was I saying? I was uh, 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 flowers. Oh yeah, uh, so I did the, this one eight hundred flowers, and they said, "Well, let's send you some flowers. You know, to let you see how good these flowers are. You know," and they send them to me, and half of them are dead. And they, yeah, but they, they, they said, I, "That's what I figured to happen. They died." <laughs> and I said, they, "You know, they were dead." I brought them home to girlfriend. She says, "These things are dead. These are," and they were. They were brown on the edges and everything. And I went back to the station the next day, serious. I said, I'm not going to do a live spot for these people. They send dead flowers for crying out loud. You know, and my reputation, if I'm going to do a live read, every other live read I will ever do will be based upon that and whether people believe me or not. And if they get a bad product, um, then my endorsement doesn't mean a thing. You know, hey, I, hey, I got a different question for you, Alex, though. What if, 
what if your business was you own 200 billboards and you're in the town, good billboards, billboards on buildings? Would you require that anything advertised on those billboards also you had the test and make sure it was a good product? I would make sure that if they or were... Or would you just no, let them have the answer? No, if they were making claims, okay, then I would, I would question it. In this particular case... What? This company made claims you were going to get fresh flowers, you know, uh, and if that wasn't true, I, you know. So, yes, I think you have to vet what you advertise, and I think that people who hand, take advertising should be responsible for the, those ads and for their claims. Well, we kind of know that's not true. You're, ver you're one of a kind, Alex. Well, it and used I to be that way, I think. A lot of people. No, but, but, you see, way, but you see, but I, 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 I always believed it. When I did live ads in San Francisco, and I used to do four a day, because I used to get paid 50 bucks every time I'd read one in San Francisco. I made a huge amount of money every year off of doing live reads and live ads. And yet, I applied that same ethic to everything I would advertise. That, that the product lived up to its reputation. Uh, and to what it was claiming. Because as I said, if I'm that good at selling stuff, and that's the reason why people wanted me to do live ads is because I was that good at selling stuff. If I was that good at selling it, if I started becoming disreputable or if people started getting products that sucked because they bought it on my word, my reputation in that area would just diminish completely and I wouldn't be able to sell shit. So I, it, yep. was, it was every bit as important for me to make sure that people got what was advertised. You know, because but there it, are some people out there like Limbaugh that some, some of them sell some weird, you think, unethical stuff almost. Well, it, 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 did, it, it isn't a question of unethical. I mean, I'll, I'll take an ad for anything. You know, uh, 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 radio stations be, become so greedy, they will take any ad that comes across the transom. Right. That's, and they started taking the ads. They started taking ads for strip clubs, you know. Um, and, and well, people, that's what people, the Internet wait, is. The wait, internet, wait a minute, wait a minute. And people, just, wait, you let me finish what I'm saying, Tim. So, you know, people would say to me, isn't that terrible? They're taking ads for strip clubs. Have we gotten that low? And I said, listen, that's the most honest thing they could probably advertise because at least you go in and there's a naked woman there like they said. You know, I said, I'm more, I'm more worried <laughs> yeah. about all this other shit that they're making claims about that they are taking advertising for. You know, this, all this shit about uh, a gold, buy gold. You know, gold is going to save, you know, you're going to, that's yeah. the only sure thing. And you know who was the biggest pusher of, the, of gold? It was one of the biggest liberals in broadcasting. Tom Hartman. Really? Tom oh. Hartman. Oh, yeah, he pushes it. And yeah, I, said, I said, shame on you, Tom, for doing that. Shame on you for calling yourself a liberal and that you care about the people and then you know damn well that the marketing gold is it fluctuates so much a person could get caught in the middle of it. And at one point, the gold market just went bad. And, and I, ke I kept saying, ask Tom Hartman how he feels about that. You know, what's his excuse? And he was still running the ads after that and doing the live pitches and his own personal endorsement of these, of these gold products. Who does the reverse mortgage ads now? Uh, was it Alan Thick before he died? No, it wasn't. Uh, 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 I can't remember. What's his name? Uh, B B Bain? No. But but that's that's a bad deal for a lot of people. Those reverse mortgages. Um, Some people need they it. They are. That's... If you don't have anybody who's going to uh, be uh, inheriting your fortune, so to speak, then it's not a bad idea. But if you have anybody that you want to will your estate to, uh, the fact it's is. True. That, it, you're you're screwing them out of their getting the estate. That's for damn sure. What, what do you think about advertising prescription drugs? Because that's illegal. In some you know, it's funny that girlfriend and I were talking about this tonight. Because it used to be you couldn't advertise prescription drugs, and now look at your six thirty newscast, you know, your network newscast. About, All day long. I, I would say over three quarters of the ads are for prescription drugs. And it's 15 minutes of the drug, I mean, 15 seconds of drug. And so then 40, 45 seconds of the five interaction. 45 seconds of side effects. Y yeah, yeah. Uh, of legal. 45 minutes or 45 seconds of circus. Uh, and I love how half of them say, if you've got cancer, this could lengthen your life. And then you look at the small print and it says, by up to three weeks. 
Yeah, you, you know, could die. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, I'm going to pay $2,000 a month for a drug? You know, and then the interactions of things like, you know, death. Uh, oh, yeah. it's funny. The, the worst contradiction that they list, if you ever listen, watch those ads, the last one they ever list is death. Right? They go, blah, 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 and death. Right, right. You know? Um, uh, hey, what was the one they just pulled off the market? Somebody just sued because uh, their wife got that, uh, the stuff in her veins for an MRI, and she's been deathly sick ever since. Some somebody famous down southwest. I don't know, uh, but but, but uh, oh, there's oh. some bad you know there's some bad drugs out there. Well, but that's oh. probably what's contributed to the op opioid crisis is so many people just think that drugs are you know is what you should do anytime you have a minor. Well, opioids thing. opioids get you away from the humdrum life. You know they. Yeah. They they nope, they, 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 they they get you away from the from the, from the world as it is, and with Trump as president, an opioid sounds like a very good thing right now. You know, after I fell off the motorcycle, I was in pain, and I had some Dilaudid, and <laughs> <laughs> I took uh, I took a half. I took a half before I went to sleep Monday and and last night, and I had some pretty weird dreams. <laughs> well, my was, wife constantly takes Dilaudid. Uh, really? But, but, well, I mean, she has a, a bad back, and occasionally, when the, especially the weather gets bad, it, it she gets into a lot of pain, and she needs it. But she has really? a doctor. She has a very good doctor who watches how much she's using, how often she's using it, and makes sure that she doesn't, you know, go beyond yeah, a certain they'll limit. They'll make her take blood tests, too. Probably. Well, they're, they're, very, he, they're very good about it, and she's very good about it. She doesn't take it unless she's right. really in pain. And this yeah. is... A, a lot of people don't have good doctors, though. Well, they gave them to me when I had my kidney stone, Jeez, but I didn't take it for that. But the motorcycle accident, for that, I took it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. The real people to blame is the, the drug salesmen that go and convince the doctors to prescribe all these. Yeah, have you seen brands. some of those salespeople who come into those offices? Good looking. I, I've, I've been to the doctor, and there's been more drug salesmen there than patience well i remember watching high. sitting in my um, my gastroenterologist's office one day and he was a little late getting to me and watching as this procession of the most beautiful women i've ever seen walked in the door to sell their to peddle their drugs you yeah. know yeah well they're going to complain about the doctors attacking them we'll see well uh uh Maybe that's For part. The kind of money they're making, they're not going to complain. <laughs> making it, no, but they need, they'll need more money. Plus, they're probably uh, addicted to the drugs that go out. Yeah, you know, but uh, all I'm saying is is that, uh, I, I, you know, when you talk about accountability and advertising and so on, that does not exist like it used to exist. It used no, to be it's, it's you, were, you, did, you ran a radio station. You were very careful about the advertising you took. And my argument has always been to anybody who has a radio station, and I heard some terrible ads when i've been doing radio recently as i said you do know that people will perceive your station based upon the ads you're playing but it doesn't matter it, if you own all it, the radio stations it, well if, if you're playing nothing but ads about uh, dr old, drugs and everything you know that nothing but old people are listening to that radio station you know um right. i often said that if you want to find out what a society is like Go to England or go to France or go to Spain. Listen to their media, and you'll know everything you want to know about that that social group. Okay. Yeah. And and when yep. you watch the news on NBC at six thirty, and two thirds or three quarters of the ads are uh, ads for drugs, you know that nothing but old people are watching that newscast now. Because no young people watch the watch Lester Holt. Because yeah, those are all pinpointed by. You know, um, analyzing, analyzing their target audience. So they exactly. know Unless who's watching. the cannabis ads, huh? the cannabis ads, you know, you got a younger audience. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Hey, listen. Uh, you know, I got. About, Bottom of the ninth. I got about. Two, what five is it? In Houston. Five they, point Houston. Five. Bottom of the ninth. One out. They got two outs to come back. Okay. Four. Well, uh, the Dodgers ain't going to win this one. They're so. done. Go Astros. They're, it's their first ever, isn't it? Yep. Their first one. Yep. Did they ever play a World Series before? Uh, I don't think so. Wow. Oh, wait, they did, yeah. Estimated. 
Well, you know, their, their city was just decimated. It's a it's a good thing for the people down there to at least uh, you know uh, have have something to rejoice over. Well, yeah, and, yeah, and I, I, as a person who lived in Houston for quite a while and loved the town, uh, I'm very happy that they won. And I've never been a particular fan of the Dodgers anyway, so yeah, fuck the Dodgers, the right? <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you everybody for being here tonight. In spite of the fact that uh, we hardly had anybody. Uh, we, uh, we had a, actually only three people because Mike slept through most of the show. Uh, <laughs> I filed a protest. Yeah. Okay, he, yeah. Well, he woke up for, for the intersection. Yeah. That's harassment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, hell, he'll Phil. stay awake on the intersection. <laughs> yes. Kevin, thank you so much. Phil, thank you. And Tim, thank you. Thank you all. Wave goodbye, everybody, because that would be a very nice thing to do. Bye bye. See you later. Anyway, that's it for our citizen panel for tonight. A little, a little on the sparse side because we do have the seventh game of the World Series. And whenever you get something like the seventh game of the World Series, man, that is a barn burner. And apparently it looks like uh, the Astros are going to be the world champs. And I feel very happy for Houston, Texas. They could use this, you know, this little boot in the ass. Hey, uh, Jack and Amy are next with the intersection, and that's followed at mid at uh, one o'clock in the morning by Connections. Uh, I'm uh, I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>